We're going to take a look inside your Hammond keyboard. Underneath this sheet metal cover is the back end of the keyboard contacts. All of those little wires are the resistance wires. Those are the ones that get messed up if you happen to have a gooey foam issue. The foam degrades and attacks those little wires and eventually they will corrode and break in two and they're almost impossible to trace, to repair. This is the business end of the contacts. Those bars, the horizontal bars that you see there are the bus bars. We're looking at the right side of the keyboard at this time. When you push down a key, the key pushes the actuator down, that black part there. The actuator pushes all of the contacts at the same time or close to it and makes a connection between the contact and the bus bar. You'll also notice that after the contact touches, it bows ever so slightly. That bowing causes the contact to scrape along the bus bar, making these contacts in effect self-cleaning. That's why they take, tell you to hit a key several times if you happen to be missing a tone somewhere. Sometimes that'll clean it up. The action is kind of like a sawing action when the contact comes down, hits the bus bar, and goes beyond the point of contact, it moves back and forth like that, kind of making a scraping motion. On the bus bar shifter side of the keyboard, underneath this blue plastic plate is where the bus bars are. This blue plastic plate holds the bus bars in place. On the later models, this is blue plastic. It's different material on the earlier models. You don't need to take those screws out. Just snug them down with a screwdriver. Uh, so you can see by turning the bus bar shifter, it causes the bus bars to move in one direction. And then turning it the other way, it pulls the bus bars. Looking at it from a different perspective, you can see how far these bus bars actually move. It's a good idea to shift your bus bars by half or a full turn of that bus bar shifter every few years. It's going to make your bus bars last a lot longer. So once you loosen those screws and push the plate back, you can extract the bus bars. Just be very careful that you don't kink them. Let's take a look at some bus bars. These on top have a very generous coating of bus bar lube on there that has over time dried and caused this keyboard to sound horrible. On top there you can see one of the resistance wire or the, uh, the bus bar wires that has broken. The bus bar on the bottom is what it's supposed to look like. These bus bars are just kind of a square cross section or a rectangular cross section that has a wire, a palladium wire that's attached to the top of it. That palladium is the contact. So you can see that over time you can have these little divots in here that can eventually make the wire break. That's why shifting the bus bar, giving it a new contact surface every once in a while is a good idea. So underneath the cover plate on this earlier model keyboard, you can see on the upper keyboard the a screw that attaches the upper and lower manual has to be removed. I like to put a clamp on there. After I take this screw out, the upper and lower manual are no longer connected there, and they can come apart. So after removing that screw, you now get, can gain access to that. You can see this is one of the earlier models that has a brown phenolic plate on top that holds the bus bars in place. So just loosening the screws, pushing that plate back out of the way allows access to get in there and pull your bus bar out. Be very careful when you pull them out and put them back in that you don't kink them. What I like to do is, after extracting them, I will use denatured alcohol or acetone or some other type of solvent, uh, sa uh, saturate a rag, and wipe down the bus bar several times and keep wiping it until I don't see any more dirt on the rag. 
Just be very careful you don't kink the thing. I can't emphasize that enough. After these things are cleaned, I'm going to take some deoxit and apply a thin coating to the bus bar. I don't like to use the lube just because um, I'm afraid it's going to attract dust. Some people use it, some people don't. Totally up to you. The deoxid seems to do a very fine job in keeping the bus bars working properly for a long time. When you go to reinsert these bus bars, that's when you run into the more, most likely issue of kinking it by pushing it too hard. What you want to do is slowly insert it. You may have to twist it and turn it and jig it.